Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here again, bringing some uh, glorious math videos. In this video, I'm going to take you through changing y is equals to mx plus b, otherwise known as slope-intercept form, to general form. So uh, this is one of the algebraic processes that you need to probably learn if you're doing a unit on equations of lines. And, you know, it's not the most complicated thing to learn, so that's a good thing. Um, but it's also... Um, you know, it's not really a useful process because y equals mx plus b is the most useful form of a line, in my opinion. Although general form has its uses, in my opinion, nothing beats y equals mx plus b. So if you're looking for why you would do this, um, you know, the only reason I can really think of would be if you're solving a linear system and you want both equations to look the same. But anyway, that doesn't matter. You need to know it, so I'm going to teach you how to do it. All right, so uh, these are my three forms of a line. So y is equal to mx plus b is right here. This is my slope point form, and this is my general form. So one of the things we need to know about this is sort of the, the restrictions on a, b, and c. So b and c cannot be fractions or decimals. They have to be integers. So they can be negative, but they, but they cannot be fractions or decimals. a has to be a positive number. So like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, cannot be a decimal, cannot be a fraction. All right, so let's look at y equals mx plus b, and let's change one of these bad boys. So y equals 6x minus 1. So what you want to do is get everything to one side. So when you have a y here, only thing I do is I just subtract y from both sides. Subtract y, subtract y. So I end up with 0 is equal to 6x minus y minus 1. And believe it or not, that is general form right there. So the only thing my students absolutely hate having the 0 on the left side, so they like to just reverse it to make it look like ax squared, ax, AX, AX plus bx plus c. But there it is. It fits my criteria. So this is a positive number. It's a no decimals. And these can be negative again. This is a negative 1. This is a negative 1. But they're not decimals, so we're good to go. That's simple as that, guys. All right, let's try the next one. So, again, I'll subtract y from both sides. Subtract y, subtract y. So I have uh, 0 is equal to negative 2x minus y plus 5. And we're almost done. The only problem is we have this negative here that we cannot have. We, can have not, we cannot have a negative in front of my x value. So what I want to do is I'm basically going to multiply this guy by negative 1. So this is the reasoning why I can do it. But of course, one of the things you should know is that if you have any equation equal to 0, I can change the signs of every single number if I want to. So I can change the 2x, negative 2x to a positive 2. As long as I change everything, the negative 2y to a positive y, and the positive 5 to a negative 5. So essentially, all I'm doing is multiplying each one of these things by negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2. Negative y times negative 1, positive y. 5 times negative 5, negative 5. For negative 1 times negative is negative 5. So there it is. There's my general form. And again, if you wanted to put the 0 on the other side, you can, but that's not necessarily a thing. But I like to because I like to make everything... I like to have my zeros on the right-hand side for some reason. All right, let's look at another one that has some fractions in it. So if you look at this guy, I'll rewrite it. Got lazy, didn't want to use my fraction button. It's 1 half x plus y. So if I subtract y from both sides, I do it again, and up with 0 is equal to 1 half x minus y plus 4. So again... This guy has to be a positive whole number or a positive natural number. I can't have the, and that's not, uh, I can't have the one half there. I, was, uh, I just wanted to fill in, look like one and one half. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this by multiplying by whatever's in my denominator right here. So I'm going to multiply this equation by two. So one half times two is just one. So I end up with one x. So I'll just write x. And then 2 times negative y is negative 2y. And then 2 times 4 is 8. And then we'll let that equal 0. And there's my general form. So if you got a fraction, 
multiplied by what's in the denominator. If you have one fraction, multiply by what's in the denominator. All right, let's look at the situation where we have two fractions. So we have two fractions. I'll rewrite this. Y is equal to 1 over 6 x plus 3 over 4. So again, I'll subtract y from both sides. So I end up with 0 is equal to 1 over 6 x minus y plus 3 over 4. So I need to multiply this guy by something, and the question is what? So the, que the answer to that question is whatever the common denominator of 6 and 4 is. So in our case, it's 12. So I'll multiply this guy by 12. So then I have 1 over 6 times 12. So that's 1 times 12 divided by 6. If you want to think like that, it's 2. So I have 2x. Then I have negative y times 12 is minus 12y. And then 3 over 4 times 12. So that's 3 times 12. 36 divided by 4 is 9. You can also think of it as 12 divided by 4 is 3 times 3 is 9, whatever way you like to think of it, or just use a calculator. And then that's equal to 0. And there it is by general form. This guy is positive and a whole number, and these guys are integers. All right, guys, I hope this video helps you on your quest to conquer math. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, share it with your classmates. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys in class.